Hey there, YouTube, it's Wes Spencer coming at you again. We're gonna be talking about the new changes inside of the Pi ecosystem, specifically the brainstorming apps. May not sound like a big deal to you, but inside of that, there are some really big implications for Pi that I see as threads woven through the whole thing. And we're gonna cover that today. We're gonna cover why it's important. We're gonna cover what it means to you and what the future of the Pi ecosystem could look like due to these changes. Don't miss this. We're gonna cover all that and so much more coming right up. All right, guys, so let's jump into this. If we have never met before, my name is Wes Spencer. Welcome to my channel. We cover all things technology. We definitely dive into cryptocurrency quite a bit in this channel and a lot of the other fun things that I love to cover. I'm an entrepreneur. I've run multiple companies. I am a startup guy, so I love covering all of that as well. And I love to just give you honest, unbiased opinions of the things that I find interesting, of which crypto is a huge one. Now, speaking of crypto for a minute, I mean, you and I both know looking at all of the crypto markets, I mean, it is wild right now. We went through an awesome all-time high. We're now kind of nosediving a bit at the time of this video. What does that mean for you? It just means hold on. I produced a video, which I'll put in the link down below. If you're interested in how do I deal with crypto all-time highs and then a big nosedive, if you're struggling with that and you're like emotionally distraught because of what's going on, my friend, you are over leveraged. There are some great ways that you can make profit inside of cryptocurrency without breaking the bank, so to speak. And if you're interested in that, I produced an awesome video about dollar cost averaging with Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency. Definitely check that out. I will also put that in the link down below. I just wanted to mention all that. And the second thing before we get going, it is so good to be back. I've heard from many of you like, Wes, when are you gonna make another video? I am not like a lot of the other YouTube producers that are out there. They're just constantly daily pumping and nosediving cryptos. ETH could be a, a make you a million dollars. And then why I sold all my ETH. <laughs> Those channels really get on my nerves. I'm actually spending most of my time making my money by running companies. And I do this YouTube channel on the side because it's a lot of fun. So you'll never, at least for a long time, you're not gonna see me produce daily videos, so to speak. But what you are gonna get is a lot more honesty than I think a lot of other channels that may be out there. And I'm not calling out any in specific. So if you think I'm thinking of one in particular, I'm definitely not. All right, so with all that said, let's jump right into this. I'm gonna open up my app for you guys real quick so you can see what I am seeing. And oh my good gracious, that is small. There we go. Okay, now that's a little bit bigger for all of us. And I wanna talk more about what the core team is building with the brainstorming app. There are some really big implications in all of this. I'm gonna show you this. So first of all, if you don't know how to get to that, it's pretty easy. You're just gonna bring up your little hamburger bar that brings up uh, your, your menu, and then you're gonna go right into Pi apps. And this is where it exists. We've been used to the Fever IQ and the chat apps for quite a while as we've been around, but we know that the Pi team has been busy doing some things in the back room, so to speak, and they're giving a picture of some of this for us. And this is pretty exciting. I'm going to click right here on the brainstorming apps itself. And this is where they give you an overview. So if you want to know more about how all of this works, you definitely get a, a, an introduction into what this is and why it matters. I'm going to skip through a lot of this other than to say one thing that the Pi team has done better than any other MMC that's out there. And I call all of these mobile mining cryptos, MMCs like Pi, TimeStop, B, all of these others. Those are MMCs. And that's just a, a term I coined so we can kind of keep track of what those cryptos are. One thing that the Pi team has done a really good job is just including the community. I think they're definitely the leaders there. They lead from the front. It was one thing that I had some criticisms of them in the, in the olden days of Pi, so to speak. And they've really done a much better job of being in front of their community and leading the vision. And so one of the things they do a great job leading is... What does the community think? Everything from wallets that are coming out to what they should focus on and here with the apps themselves. And so with this brainstorming idea, they're splitting everything into two different categories. You see this here, apps with a business model and then ecosystem apps. So the difference I think should be pretty clear. Apps with a business model are simply things like, what can we do to create a vibrant ecosystem? You guys know, I've always said, there's no guarantee of Pi succeeding. It could actually fail. It's speculative at this point. But one thing that will drive it to success, at least give it orders of magnitude, chances, higher chances of succeeding, is a vibrant, user-led, community-led ecosystem. And so that's what this, these apps with a business model are all about. We should definitely be thinking, 
look, if, if Pi has somewhere between 10 and 15 million users, I mean, that, that's huge, that's amazing. How can we leverage that? How can we build vibrant ecosystems? Not just like buying and selling things, but think about what the App Store to iOS has done for the iPhone. Same idea of what apps inside of this ecosystem could do. It doesn't just have to be games. It doesn't just have to be a marketplace to buy and sell things. You could potentially leverage this for business apps as well. Even think about things like LinkedIn. I'm very active in LinkedIn. By the way, if you want to find me there, just Wes Spencer, go search me up. Be happy to connect with you on LinkedIn as well. Uh, there's a lot of things that we could do with the Pi ecosystem. So I'm pretty excited to see what comes out of that. If you've got ideas, leave your comments down below. I would love to know what your ideas for like a business driven ecosystem app might be. But then the second one is the, the ecosystem apps themselves. So these are things that make the platform better. Uh, maybe make it faster, make it easier to maybe transmit Pi from one another or make something, maybe make KYC checking a lot easier. In fact, that's what we're going to talk about here. So they split both of these apps into two of those different categories as far as ideas go. And, you know, they do have this idea as well of, look, you can contribute an idea if you're not a developer. I mean, I think that's a good thing by and large, but just keep in mind, everyone, we're going to have a lot more ideas than things that are actually developed. And I know this because we have the companies I've run, a team of developers. I run software companies, by the way. I've bought and I've sold them, uh, done really well with all of that. And one thing I can tell you is anybody can generate an idea, but there's only a finite number of people inside the organization or even inside of Pi that actually have the capability of building it. So keep that in mind. If you produce some kind of Pi app and you have a great idea for it, uh, but you don't know how to write code, you're going to be limited. You're gonna have to pitch and sell that vision to a lot of other people to get it going. One of the other really incentivizing pieces of all of this is that as a community, if you have an idea for something or you read something that you really, really like, at the very top of this, they, they explain this. I'm just gonna kind of pause it right here, even though I'm not gonna read this to you, is they have an incentivization system where as you, if a user see something you really like, not only can you up or downvote it, very much like Reddit and other communities that allow voting and, and the community to have a voice, but also they allow you to contribute some of your pie into a project. Now, why would you wanna do this? Well, there's two reasons you wanna do this. First, if you find something you really like, you can donate your own pie into the project. Now, why would somebody do that? Well, it's a way of getting skin into the game, so to speak. It's a way of saying, hey, I'm passionate about this and I wanna see it succeed, and I am going to donate some of my pie into this to make this happen. And if that thing gets built, the people that were involved in building that app get that collection of pie that have been donated. It's very much like Kickstarter. If you've seen Kickstarter before, you see an idea you really, really like and you wanna get involved in because you wanna see it happen for your own good. And so you donate some money into it and usually get some kickbacks, early access to something, a better price, whatever. But it's sort of taking that Kickstarter idea behind it. Now, the second thing that I think will drive this to success as well is the fact that if the project never gets built and you put pie into it, no big deal, you're going to get that pie back to you. In other words, if it does not succeed, then you do have the ability to recuperate the amount of pie that you put into it. And so I think that is really important because it's gonna give us the ability to say, I believe in this project, but if it doesn't work, if it doesn't pan out, if no one builds it, I'm gonna get that back. That's that's nice, that's a, that's a real big thing. So let's take a look at some of these. I'm gonna hit continue right here, and you're gonna see two of these proposed apps, and one of them I'm gonna talk a whole bunch about because I think it is an awesome idea. It's not brand new, it's not innovative in the sense that others have done this before with cryptocurrency, but I think it belongs in the Pi ecosystem. And by the way, at the beginning of this video, remember I told you that we are going to cover some interesting threads inside of all of this? Well, we're going to do that right now as well. So the first one I really want to cover is the ePassport KYC. Now, many of you have asked me in the comments, my YouTube videos, what do I do about KYC? I haven't been checked or I did get checked and I couldn't get through the process, whatever. And one thing I always said was, remember, this whole Yodi app thing is just a way to build a KYC group of customers. I think it's around like $1 per KYC. YC check. And so there's some real money that the Pi team had to pay to get that system going. And so they just needed a test bed of KYC checked users to really build off the ecosystem. But I've always said, give them time. There will be alternative methods and hopefully free methods of KYC checking that will allow for all of the masses of everybody inside Pi. And we're starting to see that come true. The ePassport KYC is really, really awesome. Now, here's the way that this works. It actually leverages the, some data inside the NFC chip in your passport. 
If you want to read more about this, two things. Go check Doc 9303. Just Google that. That is an open standard that most of the passports that are in use today use. Every passport, at least that supports the standard, the Doc 9303, is going to have that little chip in there. And it does some interesting things. One of the things it does is it gives us the capability to verify the passport. Now, why is this interesting? It's interesting because there are a number of other cryptocurrencies that have come out, especially like the universal basic income, the UBI coins that are out there. And many of them actually leverage this technology. It leverages a, a check on the passport that you have to verify you and say, yes, it is you. Now, how does all of this work? Well, I'm going to avoid the technicalities in this video, but if you want to know more, I'm going to put a link down below. I actually, a really long time ago, did a video review of UBI. It's a coin that's out there. It's Chinese made. I wasn't super thrilled about it. You guys know I like to do unbiased reviews. If you want to check that out and see more about how the Doc 9303 works, what's inside of the NFC, check itself, and what that means for all of us, go watch that video. It'll answer those questions. But let me just say this. I'm a cybersecurity guy. There's going to be a lot of questions of like, hey, checking my passport, what kind of data is going to leak out? Well, if you look at Doc 9303, it's only a check. It, it uses encryption. It uses what's called public and private key cryptography, very much like most cryptocurrencies, actually. And so what it does is it lets you read that data and confirm that that data is correct. And that's really all it does. It doesn't actually leak any data out. Maybe a better way to explain it is like this. I have the ability to go pull down the Doc 9303 tokens, and that token just lets me verify identity. Think of it as giving a green light or a red light, and that's about it. And so what I could do is I could bring my actual passport close to the phone and use the NFC app on the phone itself and do a check. And what would happen is the software would use the token that I downloaded from the Doc 9303 standards and check it. And all it does is it, it has the ability to look at that data that comes to it and says, is this valid or is this not? And it gives you, think of it as like a green light, a yes, this is valid. No, this is not valid. And that's the basis for a KYC check. That's a, ba the a way, not the only way, but a way to say that user is valid. That is a real human being. Therefore, we have verified their identity and can move on. Now, there's more to it than that, and I'm not avoiding it because I don't know the technicalities, but I've already covered it in another video. And by the way, that video is really bad. It was right when I was getting my whole YouTube channel started again, and so it's not great quality, but the content is good, and it will cover how the Doc 9303 stuff exists. It'll cover what information is given out from your passport. It is certainly not going to be the biometric data that's in it. It's not going to be your personal information that's in it. It's just the basics needed for the check itself. Now, what do I think about it? You've already kind of intuited what I think. It's awesome. It's a great idea. I think this is a fantastic way to do KYC checks. It has all the advantages. No personal data of mine is going to leak out because of how Doc 9303 works. And then also it's a free method for the Pi team to do the checks. Now, very quickly, they do have a video chat option, and I'm not gonna cover that as much in today's video, only because if you go watch the core team and Nick himself kind of talk through how the whole thing works on their YouTube channel, you will see how it works. It basically is just a way for us to verify with multiple people involved that uh, watch a video together of two people verifying themselves. I think it's a fine way to go too, especially for those that don't have passports and maybe in a country that doesn't support Doc 9303, but I'm just telling you guys, the, the document checking from the passport is a great way to go because it's way quicker. You don't have to have anyone else get involved. You don't have to have someone else watch a video of you. I just feel like that's a little odd. Uh, so I'm a big fan of that. And so you can actually see the voting here. You can see the upvotes and the downvotes. So I'm just going to upvote or uh, updo, so to speak, uh, my favorite. Uh, once I hit that upvote, I'm not going to put a, an opinion in here now, other than probably later I'll say, hey, go watch my YouTube video. I cover this in depth. Uh, but that's what I would say. And then the other thing I'm going to do is, hey, I'm a nice guy, so I'm going to donate some, some pie to this. Why not 50 pie? So I'm, I'm going to say, hey, I like this project. I like what's going on. So I am going to donate 50 pie for this. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> I don't have KYC approved yet. I do have a conversation coming up with the core team really soon, and I'm going to ask them for KYC access. That is how the whole process works. Now, why is that important? It's important because of this one reason. KYC is coming for the masses. And I think it'll be one of these two methods or potentially both of these two methods that will work for the KYC process. And if you're new to the Pi system, go watch 
watch some of my other videos, but KYC is a critical crux to a cryptocurrency like this because it's mobile mining. We have to know that there's only one person with one phone mining. You and I both know we have old phones. I can go to you know, my local store and buy a bajillion phones. I can mine with all of them, and that breaks the ecosystem. Mobile mining cryptos have this idea of one phone to one identity. In other words, I must confirm that person's identity with one device to know that is who they are and that is how they're fairly mining crypto. It shouldn't be Wes with a whole farm of phones mining. That's breaking the ecosystem for everybody. And so that's why KYC is really, really important. And that is why I am glad to see the Pi team building some really good changes in functionality to KYC for greater mass adoption. Hey, what do you think? Are these ideas good? Is there a better way to handle KYC? How are you thinking through KYC and what are your ideas for it? And also, what do you think about the brainstorming app itself and everything inside of it? Do you have an idea for it? Let me know the answers to all of these questions. I would absolutely love to know what you think. You guys are so awesome. Thanks for watching this. And by the way, I made this whole video without asking and now I'm going to. Would you please hit the subscribe button? Would you do that for me? Hit the bell icon, smash the like button. That really does go a long way, not just for the whole YouTube algorithm gods that are out there, but just for me as I grow this content, I grow this channel for you guys. I hope you guys have an awesome day. Thank you so much.